Okay, we should be live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Microphone looks good. No capture. All right, we're back, and we are working on the Sixth Doctor and Ian Chesterton. So, pull this back up. So, we are currently at 165 non-land cards. And we are trying to get this down to 60. <clears throat> Literally a hundred and five cuts. Um, yeah, this one's gonna be this one's gonna be rough. It feels like because I already had to resort to sublists and cutting redundancies in effects, and I think we're gonna have to. Do a lot of that because there are a lot of one-offs and unique cards that I really want to keep in here. Um, yeah, it was hard to just cut cards by scrolling through the first time. But let's see. You know what? Honestly, with how the rest of the deck is looking, I think we can cut Captain Sase. Even though we'll be running a whole bunch of legendary cards, a 4-mana 2-2 two -two that has to tap to activate her ability isn't going to be exactly what we want. Like, Hana can probably stay. Getting back a dead enchantment is a lot stronger than tutoring up one of the legends in the deck, because most of the legends, while very good in the deck, are not the main focal point. <clears throat> So, I think the biggest thing about Captain Sisse is being able to tutor up um, reactionary cards like Loran in order to destroy an artifact or enchantment that's giving me problems. <coughs> you know, or, like, grab the history teacher so that we can read ahead on the sagas we need to. That sort of thing, but I think it's stronger to get back um, the sagas that have already expired than it is to tutor for the legends. If she could tutor for the sagas also, if she were somehow worded properly for historic. <clears throat> kind of the same reason why I'm considering the, uh, Search for Glory from Paul Time. <coughs> Ooh. Uh. Yeah, when the artifact saga or legendary has a utility comes into play effect, like duplicant is pretty high on the list for me right now just because it can exile two creatures when we cast it. Um, Loran's pretty high for the same reason, being able to kill two artifacts and, and or enchantments. But we just don't have room for most of the cards in this deck by a wide margin. Like, Dovescape is very interesting as a way to lock the game once we're in position. Like, everybody casts spells and all they get are 1-1 one, one bird tokens after that. Meanwhile, we've got, like, all of our things popping off and the opponent can't... Non-creature spells, so a creature that could disrupt my combo would actually be problematic. Because then I need a creature that can bypass the Dovescape to get the thing rolling again. But, you know, if we're just doing doubling season, three blind mice as a token type stuff, then we'll just get completely out of hand and overwhelm most people. Especially if we have, already have uh, Norn to shut off their comes into play ability, so their creatures are even less likely to disrupt my thing, but... Uh, do really like Mirror Entity, both for the sheer number of creatures I can generate and the random value from that one saga. Technically two of them, because, uh, Fennec will also work if there are no other, uh, mutants I think is in play. We can activate the Mirror Entity and allow one of our creatures that is now a mutant to punch out the Fennec. 
if we needed to. Like, I don't know how big a deal that would be, but I'm sure it will come up at some point in time. I'm not sure how they killed all the mutants without killing the Fennec. It's probably like a variable wrath where they could choose not to kill the 6-6, six, six, but kill all the 3-3 three, three death touchers that could take it out. Or maybe I didn't bother making a whole bunch of 3-3 three, three death touchers and there was only one or two and they died. Um, hmm. Tesseret's really good because the deck is incredibly mana hungry and his plus one to untap two artifacts. Like, if I ever cast Gilded Lotus and make a second Gilded Lotus and untap both of them with Tezzeret, I'm going to be doing so well. Like, just that turn is going to be insane, most likely, let alone the future turns. Uh, there's too many cards like that, though, where it's just like, oh, if I just have this... Uh, I'm going to be honest, I think we can cut Gilder Baron while he can speed read through stories to get multiple triggers by doubling the counters on the ones, especially the ones that have a lot of chapters, where if it has two counters on it already, we can do uh, chapters three and four right away. And he helps with some of the Planeswalkers that are on the list, uh, being a backup to doubling season, but I'm going to go with no. I do love him, though. He's literally one of my favorite Magic the Gathering cards. Like, Gilder Baron is adorable, and the effect is both very unique. There are very few cards that do what Gilder Baron does, and uh, very potent because of that. So Gilder Baron is actually a card that I genuinely love on multiple levels, and it's just not what the deck needs, unfortunately. Because that is his biggest thing, is that he could skip to chapter two again like get from chapter one to chapter two in the same turn or do chapters three and four after it gets to two if we're speed reading through it but those are the only two things he can actually do so and he can ultimate our planeswalkers the turn that we play them but which is where his actual power... When I say he's incredibly powerful and unique, that is one of the things that he does that almost no other cards can do. Uh, it's literally him, um, Doubling Season, and I believe uh, the Deep Glow Skate can just straight double the counters on a permanent when it comes into play. So I believe those are the three that can let you ultimate a Planeswalker immediately. Without any, for like, you know, there are some Planeswalkers that are close enough to their ultimate where something that adds a counter or two when they come in would do it. But these are the only ones where it's like, no, you double it. Like, most Planeswalkers you can ultimate immediately off of that effect, so. And most Planeswalker ultimates are incredibly brutal because they're so hard to get to in the first place. Uh, we don't have... Infinite Gear, you have Ceaseless Hunger, hmm, like Ceaseless Hunger is just so good for exiling the two permanents to begin with, like he doesn't even have to stick around, the fact that we might be able to generate two of him to exile decks though when they attack, like that's cool. Uh, we might not have room for him, though. The other downside is that we are copying the spell, not the cast trigger with the Doctor, so we won't actually get to exile four permanents unless we have, like, um, what's its name? Lithoform Engine in play or something? Or Strionic Resonator? So maybe. Uh, Aetherworks Marvel... Can be cut. Aetherworks Marvel is one of the ones, like, it's not doing much on its own. It really needs to get copied by the Doctor. Once it gets copied, it gets pretty out of hand, because then every permanent dying can make two energy, and then it's very easy to copy it again after that. So, once we have 
once cracking a fetch land lets me spin one of the Aetherworks Marvels in play, that's when I think the deck has gotten completely out of hand and we're just going to win the game from having Aetherworks Marvel in the deck. But it takes a lot to get there. Yeah, I can see cutting Aetherworks Marvel. There are a lot of cards that are fun and silly in this deck that get completely out of hand very, very easily, but it still requires you getting to the part where they get out of hand. Like, you need to do the setup. Once the setup's done, that's when it starts getting out of hand, so it should be more about making sure we get to the setup. Um... Yeah, I don't know that we need Growing Rights of Itlamok. <clears throat> it's good. It's mostly good for the flip side and generating way too much green mana, but... Yeah, okay. If that's where it's at its best. Like, if the front side were better for us, if we could grab an enchantment, for example like a creature or enchantment or something, or even a creature or a land, maybe. But only being able to grab creatures when creatures are probably the least important of the card types in my deck. Uh, I wonder if we're going to have to cut, like, Fall of the Thran or uh, Mending of Dominaria, especially if one of them goes. If Mending of Dominaria goes, I'd probably cut Fall of the Thran. Because my deck is way too mana hungry, I can't afford to keep losing all of my lands unless we're cutting everybody else out of the game entirely. Uh, I can see losing the Mirari Conjecture. Like, instants and sorceries are cards that we run, but we are not focused on them at all. So we have a handful of good removal spells and stuff, but not... And a lot of them aren't great to copy either, like copying the Wrath isn't helping us. Um, copying the Counterspell only matters if they have a Counterspell for our Counterspell, because then the copy also has to be interacted with. There's not a whole lot of upside to the Mirari Conjecture at that point. I thought Dance of the Mance was six. Not five. Did I mistype that? Yeah, it is six or greater. Okay. Oh, so they specifically become four four creatures. I don't know what I was doing when I was typing this in, but obviously I dan like I danced around the actual wording of this. But then, shh. The Conquer's Death I want. First of Rowan Games I would like to keep. Cure Best the Sea God. Definitely want to have that one. Battle for Bretgard is okay, but will occasionally be absolutely insane. Battle for Brekkar is one of the ones where turning the um, sagas into creatures would actually be beneficial. If I could make token copies of, like, animated sagas at that point. I don't think I quite have room for that. Orinclex lets me speed read. And, and lets me... Um, Oh yeah, Vorinclex is one of the other ones. I keep forgetting he also does that, where he doubles the number of counters you get, so he does work with uh, ultimating Planeswalkers immediately. I'm sorry, Vorinclex. I did not mean to leave you off the list. <clears throat> we did cut the other Vorinclex, right? I don't remember seeing him. We could theoretically cut Jin. He copies my artifacts, instants, and sorceries, and also counters our opponents. How does Progress Tyrant actually work? Like, if we... I need his exact wording. I want to know if he can counter two things, if there's two of him or not, or if both of them have to try and counter the same thing. 
Uh, progress tyrant. This ability triggers only once each turn, so we would get an additional artifact or instant or sorcery from both of them copying it, but both of them would try and counter the first spell an opponent casts. So we wouldn't be able to get two counter spells. Yugen, Satsuki, Emio. The Tamiyo's main thing in here is that she can make a token copy of the thing that she exiles with her minus X. Which means that we can get like a four drop or less without killing her if we cast her for full value. Yeah, we can probably cut Tam Tams. Sorry, evil Tam Tams. I don't think you're quite good enough. Like, the biggest thing she could do is um, get the ball rolling again by grabbing back the three blind mice, because then it will itself be a token that it can copy. So we're already at critical mass, but then when it dies at that point, if we like if we get board wiped on enchantments again then we can never get it back and we have to do other things <clears throat> to win the game and while we certainly have a lot of other things we can be doing uh cityscape leveler is in the same function as ulamog <clears throat> It does get to choose what it destroys when it attacks, unlike Infinite Gear, but it's also only destroying one thing and giving them a Power Stone on top of that. So... Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to need both of those, so we might be able to cut that. We want to keep Loran. want to try and keep Blade of Shared Souls if we can. Conduit's okay. I can see maybe cutting it. Gauntlet is surprisingly strong in this deck. Uh, they still have Sigarda, Gandalf, Goldberry, Yoreth is, in, is insane, Samwise. Yeah, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think Captain Sisei was the first thing we cut. So this brings us down to 159. Yay, only 99 more cards to go. Alright, let's head back to the Lord of the Rings then. Maybe I need to check all of my sagas and see which ones of them I can cut. Because there are a few on here that are just okay. Redemption, Princess Takes Flight. Broke of Midnight, Three Blind Mice, Sweet Tooth, Yenna, Line of Anticipation, Yeah, I really want to keep Anticipation if I can, because then we get to cast and a, a like historic card on an opponent's turn and trigger the doctor if we need to and probably cut brago hmm 
I'm gonna, oh, that was the thing where I was trying to type over here and then it didn't do it, typed it over here when I was looking for Theros. Okay. Now we can cut Brago. Force of Negation, Force of Vigor, Sithis, Timeless Witness, Jeweled Lotus, Displacer Kitten, Vile Duplication. Really want you here. All of my uh, tokens tapping for green, especially the non creature ones. This seems really super helpful. Might be able to cut Martyr's Bond still. Might be able to cut Flawless Maneuver. Our creatures are not our main thing. Although it does let us protect the Doctor and Ian while we're setting up, so. I'm still a bit inclined to cast it. I'm wondering if we have enough other effects similar enough to what Essex is accomplishing that we might want to cut that thing too. So once per turn, when I would make a token, one or more tokens, I can choose my other creature and have those tokens uh, become copies, like enter the battlefield as copies of that creature. So... If I'm about to make, like, ideally it would be if I'm about to make several tokens, but even if it's just one token, if I make, like, one more additional copy of, say, if I can get a token copy of the Six Doctor going or something, then I can choose that. Like, if I can get the non-legendary copy and then, like, have the other tokens come into play as copies of him. So that way, the next time we cast our first Historic Spell, we get, like, five copies of it. Because that is one of the things this deck is capable of doing, and that gets really out of hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but we might have enough other ways to do that. <clears throat> where it doesn't necessarily and I do need to get a non-legendary copy of a lot of our things because a lot of our creatures are going to be legendary because of that yeah we can probably cut Essex then you want to keep the astral dragon that one very easily gets out of hand <clears throat> I remember when that thing was spoiled and it's like yes it's an eight mana Four four, but if it ever hits the battlefield, it should probably win you the game. Like there are so many things you can do where that thing just suddenly goes infinite or generates such an absurd board position that I'm not sure how you can lose anymore. So Essex Brago. Spirit Dancer. Like, we might be able to cut the Auton Soldier, but it is very potent with our deck. Like, it is worth noting, though, that the Myriad does exile at the end of combat, so I have to do the really cool thing mid combat a lot of the time. Because the extra copies, I believe, also get exiled if you do, like, a doubling season effect. It's the, it's the same effect creating them, it's just you're getting more of them. So, since the effect causes them to get exiled, all of them will get exiled. So you have to be able to do your really cool thing mid-combat, which might make it worth cutting the Auton Soldier, then. It also doesn't hurt that the Auton Soldier itself is a physical copy of one of my legends, except it's not legendary, so I can copy, and the Soldier is an artifact, so it is a historic card when we cast it, so we could make it and the token copy of it into um, copies of our legendary creatures that I want more of the effect, so... It does technically still work in that regard. Very similar to a Metamorph, except it has the non-legendary claws on it built in, so we don't have to worry about that. 
So we could get two copies of it, making copies of our legendary cards, and one of them would be a token, which would allow all of the other things to work in the deck. So yeah, yeah I think the Auton Soldier gets to stay. Um, it's possible we cut Barbara White, or right, um, since there are a few sagas, though, that are way more powerful on their later chapters, so being able to hit one of those quickly can be very good. Uh... The City of Death I definitely want to keep, even though it can't make token copies of Sagas. Like, it specifically says non-Saga, so unlike the Battle for Breckguard, if I animated my Sagas, it still doesn't work. But it can still make token copies of so many other things that we're doing. So... Claire Oswald lets the Doctor trigger an additional time. Yeah. Fenric lets me kill two of my opponent's creatures in very roundabout ways. Like, you kill one of their creatures and give them a mutant with death touch. Then you turn another one of their creatures into Fenric. And then you kill, then you have the two of them fight and they kill each other. But... There's also other things you can do with it. Like, making their commander into Fenric means they have to get him killed in order to get their own abilities back. Or sacrifice him. You know, they have to get him off of the board and have him stop being Fenric when he comes back. So... That one has a few extra implications to it. <clears throat> and... Fenric's just a 6-6 with no abilities, so I can trump him all day, every day, with my random 1-1 one, one tokens. Um, I think we cut... Did we cut both of the extra Doctors? Right, we cut the fourth Doctor also. Which does minimize the effect of Fugitive of the, of the Jadoon. Like, that means chapter one, we get a human with Ward 2 and a Rhino. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Then I investigate, and then chapter three basically does nothing, because I'm not going to have another Doctor. It does have to be a Doctor, not a Time Lord, because Romagna is still a Time Lord. We're definitely going to keep Romana. Romana? Romagna? I think it's just Romana. Sea Devils is weird. <clears throat> uh, it's potentially insane with the... Um, what's its name? Um, Mirror Entity. Because all of a sudden all of my creatures could become Salamanders mid-combat and then all of their damage dealt to opponents would suddenly go to the creatures also. Um, Alright, so we bumped off Essex and Brago. We pop back up here down to 157. And I think it's time to check all of my sagas, see which ones we can cut, and how many we have left. No, not that saga.
Jugan is actually a saga. Let's see, treaty nine. These are sagas. Men and Princess are sagas. Three Blind Mice and Sweet Tooth. And these three. It's City of Death. These two Sea Devils Trial <clears throat> All right, so those are all my sagas. Let's come down here. Yeah, okay. So the death. That one. All right, so that's all of my sagas. <sighs> so let's see. Fall of the Thran is only good if I'm keeping the Mending of Dominaria, so if the Mending gets cut, the Fall of the Thran goes with it. <sighs> History of Benalia is three mana to make some 2 2 Knights with Vigilance. History of Benalia might be able to go, as it's one of the weaker ones. Song of Fraley's is way too strong if we have all of our other tokens out. If we don't have all the other tokens out, the um, the first ability doesn't really do anything, and that's really what we're running it for, is chapters 1 and 2 let me ramp with all of my other creatures, which, given how the deck works, might allow it to do way, way more impressive things than it otherwise could. Uh, Conqueror's Death is just an absurdly good removal spell that does other things. Uh, first row in games is card draw, a tiny bit of mana production, and it also makes a creature token to start off with. So it makes a creature token, buffs that creature token, lets me draw a card if that creature token or one of the other four power creatures is in play, and then I get a gold token to use for mana production. So it's making two tokens, putting counters on, and drawing me cards. But it's not doing any of those things super well. So it might be that I cut the first a row in games. Uh, QR Best the Sea God is just absurd. Like, 8-8 eight, eight Hexproof Kraken, locking down all of our opponent's non-lands, and stealing one of their things. The biggest downside is that the stealing of the permanent is the third chapter, so the saga will be gone at that point, and I won't be able to, like, shenanigans to redo the other chapters on it. Although, if there's anything that's stopping me from stealing stuff like, I don't know, Saurion or Homeward Path or something, 
I might not ever want it to get to that chapter. I might just want to keep pulling counters off of it to make more Krakens and tap all their stuff again. Uh, Battle for Bretgard's strongest effect is the third chapter. Uh, Bears of Lityara makes a 2-2, then makes that 2-2 into a 4-4. Then that 4-4, my other 4-plus power creatures can team up to punch a creature or Planeswalker. Yeah, I think the Bears is one of the weaker ones. Like, even the, um... History of Benalia is giving me two two twos instead of one four four, which I think the deck benefits more from going wide. Uh, Raven's Warning is the worst final saga, like final chapter, because it doesn't do anything. But I get a one one bird and gain two life. Then if I deal combat damage to a player with a flyer, I get to draw a card and look at that player's hand. And that is true for each player that I damage with a flyer that turn. So if I can attack multiple opponents with flyers, I would get to draw multiple cards. That one's very medium also. Like, it gives me a 1-1 one, one in 2 life. It might let me draw a card and look at my opponent's hand. And then it does nothing. It is one of the few uh, token makers... That actually, like, few uh, sagas that makes a flyer that's still on the list because I didn't bother with Love Song of Night and Day. So, that's a minor thing to consider is that I'm not getting flyers from any of these token makers, so I am vulnerable in the air. Whereas if I was just making the bird at least, I might still cut it, but... Uh, Weather Sea Treaty's biggest thing is that it is a three mana rampant growth that does other things. So, uh, Jugan Defends the Temple is kind of similar in that it's making a mana dork for three mana. And then the upside to this one, though, is that because it's making a token, if I draw it later in the game, I might make two or three tokens instead. Whereas this thing can only get me a land each time. And then I have to hope that I have one of the landfall card advantage cards going on. Mm. Also, Jugan Defends the Temple is very medium to make token copies of, but... Because I only get the first two chapters. That way we won't get the dragon on the other side. Except for the original. So, chapter one from Tale of Tenuviol barely does anything. Like, if my creature wasn't in danger of getting killed now, the only thing it's really doing is going, oh, hey, if you draw Wrath between now and... And, like, the next two turns, you still don't get to kill probably the Sixth Doctor. Maybe one of the other ones. And then, Chapter 2, I get to reanimate a creature. It has to be from my graveyard, though. Hmm. And then, Chapter 3 is kind of whatever. Like, yay, my guys gain lifelink. Two of my guys gain lifelink. I am way more con I'm actually way more concerned about chapters one and two than I am about chapter three with that one also. Yeah, a lot of them are decent, but not amazing is the issue for the sagas. Like the bath song is four man, I get to draw two and discard one. And eventually I get to shuffle some number of cards from my graveyard into my library and get two extra mana that turn. Mm. We do have a few others, like the Mending of Dominaria will shuffle my graveyard back into my deck while making sure I don't redraw my extra land, so... I think that one's just better. Like, it gets me back a permanent card each turn. There's Mending of Dominaria. 
Right, I mill two, the, oh, it's a creature specifically for that one. But it does give it to my hand, so it's not exactly no potential card advantage. It's just not that impressive. Because I have so many uh, ramping spells and artifacts that I'm not going to have a ton of creatures in the deck. So maybe we don't need the mending. If we don't need the mending, then we don't need the fall. Because it's going to be too hard for me to recover from my own fall of the Thran. Sometimes. Also, it's a six mana Armageddon. Like, by the time I'm casting it, other stuff should have already happened. Like, I'm not stopping my opponents from getting to their big spells at that point. Or having time to build up an artifact mana base. So... Yeah, okay. We cut the Fall of the Thran, I think. And the Mending of Dominaria. So I'm not killing my lands anymore on my own. I don't really have a way to get rid of the Princess Takes Flight, do I? Like, I got rid of Brago. I'm not running anything else that blinks it, so yeah, we can probably get rid of the Princess Takes Flight, because it's not actually going to kill anything here. It's just going to make it wander off for a little bit, so. The Three Blind Mice is never getting cut. Like, that is actually the linchpin card, I think, of this entire deck. Hmm... Might still be able to cut the bath song. Might also be able to cut Jugen and Weather Seed Treaty for that matter. Mostly want Battle at the Hell Vault to make Avacyn, like, I don't care. And sometimes it's going to be actively bad to lose. The, like, to use the chapter to exile things. The only upside, though, is that if I can get Chisei going with it, I can just keep exiling stuff, but eventually it'll go away. Chisei actually works better with the Princess Takes Flight for that effect. In fact, that might be the only way... But I still have to kill the enchantment myself at some point in time. But the upside is that nobody can destroy the enchantment in the meantime to get their stuff back. Hey, like, although they could just destroy Chisei and eventually I'll have to give all the stuff back. Yeah. Also, we have Trial of the Time Lord, which also plays into this. I'm going to temporarily remove the creatures, and maybe they'll be gone forever. Hmm. Elvault can be disruptive, though, by... Like, I don't have to choose creatures. It is a non-land, non-saga permanent. So I can just get rid of, like, their mana rocks or their, like, cool enchantment that lets their deck function for a couple turns. Until I can find a way to deal with it. I also do get the option to exile my stuff. Right, I believe Battle of the Hell Vault is technically a May. Let me double check. Might not be. I might have to exile my stuff.
a nice space. It doesn't want to auto fill in anything. The at the Hell Vault, of the Hell Vault. It says at the Hell Vault. Try that. Battle at the bridge. There we go. Battle at the Hell Vault. Uh, for each player, exile up to one target non-saga, non-land permit that player controls. Okay, so yes. We can actually not choose our things, but we can choose our things if it would be beneficial to us. Then we get to make Avison. Yeah, I'm not quite willing to cut Battle at the Hell Vault yet. Okay, herbs and Stewed Rabbits. Gives me a food, and another food, and then two hobbits, plus another hobbit for each other food I make. So, Herbs and Stewed Rabbits obviously goes very well with Samwise. Can allow me to recur my things including of herbs and stewed rabbits like it will give me two foods on its own so if he's making any foods ah true song of erendiel makes birds, so maybe I don't need... And it also draws me cards, so it's just a better Raven's Warning then. Hey, I feel a bit better cutting that. Also, it can give all of my other creatures flying, which if I'm really worried about not having flying blockers, that'll solve that problem real quick. Um... Yeah, five man. I don't think we need the fugitive. Keep all of these so far. I really want to keep War of the Last Alliance. I think we can cut the Bath Song. I think we're getting more card advantage from our other sagas. That one's kind of medium at best. Similarly, I don't think we need the Tale of Tenuvial. Scroll of Isildur is fine, like, I get to steal an opponent's artifact until this leaves play. It's also one of two cards that I have on the list where the ring can tempt me. Which makes it unlikely that I will get to, like, maybe I get to the second stage of the ring with some amount of consistency, like, whenever I draw one or the other, since drawing either of them would let me... Uh, potentially copy it. So getting to chapter, or chapter two, getting to stage two of the ring temptation where I get to loot on my skulking creature. I have an infinite army of one ones. Nothing else going on. Yeah, it's still only okay at that point. I think, I think we're good to cut, cut the scroll of a cylinder. It's nine now. Yeah, Weather Seed Treaty just seems really underwhelming. 
compared to the other ones. That's 10. Yeah, we probably don't need Jugen either. 11. First of Rowan games is kind of lackluster. Definitely keep that, keep that. History of Banali is not, like, particularly strong, but it's also not the worst one either. Like, it's cheap enough, and I'm getting enough out of it that I don't necessarily need to cut it, but I might wind up doing that because it's not that powerful. But I am cutting a lot of the other ones that make a token, so you might want the one that makes two tokens to make more bodies. Alright, so let's see. Get rid of the bears. One. And is two. Ending is three. Success is four. Raven is five. Negative six. Song is seven. Hill. Just deleted the bath song. Hang on. Oh, it's also here. Got you. Seven. We have to find it again. Seven. Hmm. This is eight. This is nine. This is ten. Alright, so everything before the bath song, so make sure there's not another fugitive anywhere. Raven. Yep, there it is. Success. Mending. The Thran. Thran Dynamo. Thran Dynamo. Alright. Let's go back up here. And let's see. We copy this. 13. So we're 12 cards over here. So 145. Okay. Hey. That was a lot of. Extra effort. Oh, hey, we're already at the hour mark, practically. Um, 
Mm. All right, so for the purposes of the YouTube VODs, we will call it here. Do I want to keep working on it, or do I want to do dailies on Arena? Um, either way, I'm going to do something else, so give me a minute, but... If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.